Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math video for you guys. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 3.6 and in lesson 3.6 we're going to be looking at the commutative property of multiplication. And the commutative property of multiplication is a property that you could use to make multiplication a little bit easier if you know one set of facts a little bit more readily than the others. And it just basically tells you that the order in which you place your factors does not affect the product. So in years past, I used to teach fifth grade and I would tell my fifth graders that you could think of the commutative property as you and your BFF. So one of my best friends is Mrs. Chu. She teaches at another school in our district. And so I would tell my kids, Mrs. Chu and I are BFFs. We're two peas in a pod. When we're in line, we don't care who comes first. Mrs. Chu can be first and I can be second, but it doesn't matter. Or I can be first and Mrs. Chu can be second and it doesn't matter because we're BFFs and we don't care. So that is really what the commutative property shows. The order in which something is written in terms of a multiplication problem will not affect its product. If I multiply three times two, that is the same thing as me multiplying two times three. My product will not change in any way. So this video, or this lesson I should say, should be pretty short because I'm just gonna show you how that property works using arrays, then I'll come back, give you some closing thoughts, then I'll wrap this video up for the day. So I will flip the camera around, get my example set up for you guys, and I'll see you in just a quick second. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the first example that we are gonna to do together. Remember, we're focusing on using the commutative property of multiplication in this lesson. And this property just states that the order in which you multiply your factors will not change or affect the product. So let's say I'm presented with a problem in which I am told in your array, you need to have 15 pieces in total. And the pieces that I always choose to use are X's. And you need to arrange those 15 total pieces into five equal rows. What I like to do first is I like to establish my rows. So here's row one, row two, row three, row four, and row five. There's my first five rows. Those are going to be the leaders of my five rows. Now I'm gonna use a different color just so that we can see the difference. I know that I need in total 15 X's in this array. So I know that that's five total. Here's one, two, three, four, five. I need to keep going until I get to 15 and I need to make sure that every row has the same amount of each. They have to be equal. So the best way for me to do that is I'm going to add an X one row at a time and I'm gonna stop when I get at 15 pieces exactly. So I know that, that was five, this is six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So now I have still my five equal rows that row has two, that row has two, that row has two, that row has two, and that row has two. And now I have a total of 10 pieces, but I need 15, so I need to keep going. So this is 10. I'm gonna make another, or add another piece to each row. This is 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So now I've created an array where I have a total of 15. Let's just confirm that we do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. I have 15 in total and I need it five equal rows. That's row one, there's three. Row two, there's three. Row three, there's three. Row four, there's three. And row five, there's three. So I have equal rows now. So what I need to do is then say, okay, if I were to write a multiplication sentence for this and come up with the product, what would that be? So we've learned in previous videos that if I wanted to write a multiplication sentence, my first factor tells me how many equal groups I have. My second factor tells me how many are going to be in each group. So I have a total of five equal groups. One, two, three, four, five. So I know my first factor is going to be five and I'm going to be multiplying that by something. I know that in each of those equal groups, there are three pieces, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. So I know my second factor is going to be three. So the multiplication sentence that would match that array would be five times three. 
I know the product because I've already counted the pieces to make sure that I in fact had five or 15 total pieces. So I know that the product of five times three is going to be 15. So let's say you were asked to make another array, but this time instead of using five times three, you were asked to create an array that represented three times five. Or in other words, you were asked to not have 15 pieces in five equal rows, but to have 15 pieces in three equal rows. We're gonna take a look and see at, take a look and see what your array would now look like and confirm that even though we switched the order of factors, our product is not going to change. <laughs> So here we have in this example, and now instead of um, what we had before, we've been asked to put 15 pieces in total into three equal rows. So I'm gonna do the same thing. First things first, I'm going to establish the leaders of my three equal rows. So here's row one, row two, row three. I'm also going to recognize that by establishing the leaders of my three equal rows, I have put down three pieces out of the total 15 that I've been asked to do. Now I'm gonna keep putting down X's until I get exactly to 15, making sure that at all times my rows stay even and equal. So that's three, this would be four, five, six. So I'm putting a piece in each row one at a time to help keep them equal. I have six now, but I need 15. So that was six, seven, eight, nine, Okay, still not there yet. 10, 11, 12. Notice that I'm keeping my rows equal. 13, 14, and 15. So I've hit that magic number 15. I can look and say, yep, I have one row there, two rows, three rows. They're equal. No row has more or less pieces than another. And now I have to ask myself, okay, how many pieces in total do I have when I have 15 in all, but arranged in three equal rows? Well, the trick that hopefully you've recognized by now, this is telling you that you have a total of 15 pieces because you knew that you were putting 15 pieces in three equal rows. If you forgot that, you can count all the X's and you would get 15. But most importantly, you wanna make sure that you understand what multiplication sentences this array now represent. So again, we know that our first factor in multiplication tells us how many equal groups are we dealing with. So I know my equal groups are represented by my equal rows. So I have one, two, three equal rows, which means I have three equal groups. So my first factor is going to be three. I know I'm dealing with multiplication, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my multiplication sign down. And then my second factor in multiplication tells me how many pieces are in each of those equal groups. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Each of my equal groups have five pieces in it. So that tells me my second factor will be five. Because there's 15 in all, I therefore know that the product of three times five is going to be 15. Now, hopefully, You've been paying close attention and you remember that this is the exact same product that we had when we did five times three and chose to put 15 into five equal rows. Our product was still 15. So that is what the commutative property shows you. It doesn't matter what order you put your factors in as long as you're using the same factors, your product will remain the same. So. That is it with the examples. I'm gonna be right back. I'll give you some closing thoughts and then you guys are all done. All right, so that's it. So hopefully you saw through those examples that the commutative property of multiplication is just showing you that the order in which that you, the order in which you write your factors will not change the product. So if I write three times five, three times five, that's the same thing as me writing five times three. They're BFFs, they don't care the order that they're in as long as they are together. Um, the only thing that will change is if you are asked to draw an array to represent the multiplication sentence that you are given, your array will look different, but your product will still be the same. So if I'm writing it as three times five first, we learned in a previous video that the first factor in terms of making an array represents our rows going left to right. How many rows do we have? Our second factor represents the columns. 
how many do we have going top to bottom and that will change when you switch the order however the number of pieces that you have in your array will not change because your product will stay the same so that's it I hope this video was easy for you guys to follow along with I hope that it was helpful to you as always if it was please give this video a thumbs up I would greatly appreciate it and I will be sure to see you guys in the next video take care bye